So, welcome back to the channel. That's right, I'm doing a voiceover. A lot of you have asked one. I think this is the perfect build to do a voiceover in. So, yeah, if you don't like my voice, I'm sorry. You just, you're going to have to mute this video and put some music on. But hopefully I'm going to give you some insight on this build and, uh, you know, explain what I'm doing at key points if you're interested. So, what am I building, first of all? I am making a timber store. This is my biggest project today, size-wise. It's not the most complicated, but definitely the biggest. I got my brother to help me because there was a lot of lifting, a lot of work to do. I taught my brother how to use the tools, so he was very helpful with the drilling and the mitre saw cutting. So uh, we managed to get a lot done in the first two days. So, why am I building a timber store? A lot of my viewers of the channel will know that I like collecting tools, especially trade machinery, because I'm doing this as a career. Uh, I want to get machines that last, which most of the time are quite big machines. I'm filling up the workshop, so I'm actually running out of space to store wood. So I took the plunge and I have decided to make a timber store in the garden. It was quite a big investment, but I think it's going to be really beneficial for the business. I'm going to be, it's going to allow me to increase production and be able to make bigger projects because I'll now have the space. And also I might be able to store some stock of products in the timber store. The main framework of this shed was made from two by two pine. It was treated pine. This build doesn't necessarily need to be treated pine because I am covering it with plywood and then cladding so it's not really going to be exposed to the elements but better be safe than sorry. So I got treated pine. Actually I'm glad I did because it did rain at one point before I put the plywood and the cladding on so if it wasn't treated that might have uh, caused some issues. So the first thing I'm doing is making the front and back wall. The roof is just a single slope roof, so one side is higher than the other. The highest point of the timber store is the front, and that's 2.4 meters, and it slopes down to 2.1 meters. It doesn't need to be the steepest of slopes, as long as the water flows off the roof, that's good enough for me. As you can see now, I'm sort of putting everything in position. This is just temporary. I added a couple of two by twos at 45 degrees, just to keep the wall up. And I'm screwing the fence post into the corner. This is a really easy way of constructing a shed or a timber store, is to make four walls and have the corners be made out of fence posts that you can screw directly into. As you can see, I haven't cut the post to size yet, and that's because I wanted to mark out with a roof beam, as you can see now, exactly where the top of the roof needs to be. So I literally put the beam in place, traced with a pencil where to cut the fence post, and I also got a bevel gauge to mark the angle of the roof, so then I can start making the left and right side walls with the slope in it. So my brother and I were contemplating whether to have a double door sort of barn door or a single door. And the main reason for building this is to store as much timber as possible. So I felt if I made a barn door, then basically I've lost a door's worth of storage. I could have put shelving behind it or even, you know, just plywood, you know. So I don't think I need a barn door. I decided to go just for a single door. And if I wanted to carry sheet goods in, then I can just put that it on its side and carry it through that way. So I think it's the right call. And I'm actually not even adding windows, which, and at the end of it, it might just look like just a wooden box. But to be honest, if I added windows, I lose a lot of storage space on the wall. I could have, you know, put a shelving there to hold solid wood. And adding a window might actually damage the wood because the UV light can discolor wood. And uh, we don't want that. So, no windows, it's just going to be a wooden box. I'm never really going to work in this shed, so it doesn't matter. So now, as you can see, I'm cutting the top of the fence post. I also cut those to the same angle as the slope roof. So now it's time to properly join everything together. And the reason I collapsed everything down is so I could drill actually into the concrete with those walls up. I obviously can... Uh, drill where the pilot holes were. So I needed to remove the walls, cut the top of the fence posts off and drill into the concrete base ready to lock the walls down. So first of all I screwed the wall into the concrete base first and then I screwed it right into the fence post. I used really long thick wood screws which were very strong and locked everything in place. There was still actually a bit of wobble to the shed once all the walls were joined together 
but that is uh, because the plywood facing wasn't screwed on and once I screw the plywood facing to the walls that's really going to lock everything in place, make it very rigid and stop any racking and uh, twisting. If any of you have thought about building uh, an outbuilding or a shed or a timber store in your garden I think this is a really easy way of doing it. Uh, just you know making four walls and screwing it right into the fence post and the good thing about this is it's not really fine woodworking so it doesn't matter if there are tiny gaps or if something is not exactly square it's still going to work at the end of it obviously you do want to try and make things square and make things level but you don't want to beat yourself up if it is slightly off so now with the roof beams which are made from two by fours i'm cutting some notches out of them and that's going to help the beams slot onto the top of the walls and really sit nicely in place. If I didn't do this, they would have more chance of, you know, wobbling back and forth. So I cut one beam out and then I trace that on all the others so then all the notches will cut out in the exact same place. So I forgot to mention the screws I used for this build was standard decking screws. And this was actually the first time I used Torx head uh, screws. And normally I use uh, posi drive bits, um, but I was really surprised with how much of a difference using a Torx uh, bit does. There was like no camming out, uh, the, the drill bit didn't slip. Sometimes, you know, it can like roll and, and, and ruin the screw head. But uh, yeah, using a Torx head was amazing. I'll definitely be using it again in the future. So now what I'm doing is I'm cutting the beams to length and I went for a 20 centimeter overhang around the whole timber store. It didn't need a huge overhang because I'm not gonna stand underneath it. It's just, you know, to stop rain from getting underneath and then the cladding will do most of the work on the side. So to screw the beams to the walls, I used again decking screws and I put one on each side of the beam going in at 45 degrees. That did hold them in well, but I also added some battens like I did on the walls to really strengthen the roof. And the reason I offset the battens is for two reasons. The first being for ease of application. If they were all in line with each other, then I'd have to drill in at an angle and I wouldn't be able to fit the drill in or be hitting against the batten. So having them offset means I can go straight in with the a screw at 90 degrees. And finally, if the battens are slightly too big or too small, I can move them along the beam and sort of flex the beam into position. If they're all in line with each other, they'd have to be dead on because you wouldn't be able to flex the beam. And of course, adding battens really strengthens the roof because later on I'll be standing on the roof to do the felting. And having the battens lock all the beams together and sort of distributes uh, the weight on the roof evenly across the whole roof. So when it snows, it will also be uh, stronger for that. So my brother and I are really happy with the progress on this timber store. We've only spent two days on it. In the next video in part two, we're gonna be adding the plywood facing to the inside and the outside of the timber store. We're also gonna be waterproofing it, adding filler and flashing around the edge, which is very important. If you're interested in this series and you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss part two. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you've got any questions about what I used, what I did in this build, make sure you comment down below and I will reply to all your comments. So thank you for sticking to the end of the video and I'll see you very soon for part two.